Right, here we are, a G3 uh, gimbal. Uh, this one's by GE, um, or JE. Um, there's loads of different manufacturers out there. I think they're pretty much the same, um, but anything that's got a, a G3 seems to be along the same line sort of thing. Um, basically, uh, rather than go through the whole unboxing thing, uh, I've already taken everything out, but just to show you, the box is really well done. Um, everything's quite a tight fit in there, so that's why I'm not doing it as a pulling out box section. Uh, and also I bought this months and months ago and it's just sat in the office uh, doing absolutely nothing and I've nicked bits off it and stuck them on other quads and everything so this one I'm actually finally going to fit it to my uh, CX-20 and then you can have a look okay and this is what you got in that box and there was more stuff than this actually uh, there was three sets of the dampeners and uh, there's three different sort of resistance on the dampeners or how efficient they are um, depending on what sort of vibrations you're getting off your quad I would imagine uh, there was a black set as well, but I've uh, taken them and used them on a different project, so uh, they've disappeared somewhere. Uh, but they will be around on, on a different quad somewhere. Uh, basically, these go between these two plates. And just to show you that it's going to offset it by about that much, separate them. Which means this motor still sticks through this plate, which I was a bit disappointed about actually. I wanted them a lot longer. Uh, but the reason they do that is they give you all the screws and everything for this to attach these on and then there's obviously a quad system with these rods that it would just clip on uh, which would be a lot easier. Uh, the only thing is that's a massive amount you know from wherever that is on the body of your quad down to the camera down here that's a heck of a shift uh, probably of the centre of gravity uh, and also your landing gear is going to have to come down a long way to clear this uh, gimbal with this setup so I've come up with a different way of doing it so uh, I'm just that's what I'm going to run through fitting it on the CX-20 shortly uh, you get the screws for it as well and a little knurled screw for it uh, as well um, it's I mean you get everything in here it's absolutely brilliantly done it's nicely manufactured as well uh, the nice thing about the motors they're all rubber coated uh, so they're all protected um, they're not going to be waterproof obviously uh, but they are they are protected so uh, you're not going to get it shouldn't get any uh, dust or anything in there uh, you get a, a USB uh, goes into your computer and then if you're changing any of the parameters I think you can do that on here with some with the software um, the only thing I've done, like I say, I've been playing with this over, over months, uh, just getting distracted with other quads. Uh, I've just added a little connector on there, just soldered those uh, on there and put some shrink wrap on as well, um, just to, so I can plug it straight into the CX-20. So you'd have to have whatever plug you wanted there. The wires are pre-tinned, so nice and easy to do. And that's the, that's the actual the thing itself. That's the actual gimbal, three axis gimbal, as you can see. Um, by the way it's going to work. Now, uh, oh, just clear the decks here first of all I think. And then you've got the instructions as well. There are quite a lot of instructions in here actually and uh, they, they do explain well um, and yeah the setup and everything is quite good on it but uh, I, I tend to just want mine real nice and easy. It's designed for the Hero 4 uh, camera and I'm going to show you my first problem uh, with talking about the Hero 4 is I don't have one. Uh, what I have is a Yami Yi and I've got the little Ellie Explorer uh, 4K and I thought one of them with a bit of luck might have just fitted um, and not a chance. Uh, nowhere near and that one's even further off the Yami Yi so uh, basically I'm going to have to change everything on it and uh, that's what I'm going to show you how we're going to do that next. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to get rid of this because it's doing nothing at all. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually mount the Yam Yi onto the uh, three axis gimbal. And basically we're going to get it on, onto that plate and then get it balanced up as well. We, uh, we need to get it balanced and I'll show you why we would need to get it balanced as well. Uh, I'm going to use some real technical stuff here and um, some elastic bands is what's going to be used to actually hold it on there. I've got loads of reasons for using elastic bands. One, they're cheap. Uh, two, they're flexible, uh, which is kind of built in. Uh, if you get a massive crash, they will let go or at least give a bit of give in it and they tend to keep things roughly where you've pulled them in tight. So uh, I find them brilliant. I use them on virtually every bit of 
quad I've got around and uh, if you have a look around the channel you'll see what sort of results I'm getting so I'm quite happy with it so it's uh, it's the way I do it might not be for everyone so basically just going to make sure we get either side of the lens and then just a quick turn around the back there we go the other thing is you can carry spares with you as well so you can't do that with every bit of kit can you basically that's not bad apart from it being totally unbalanced but it is you know, it is working. It is going to hold it there. That's not going to go anywhere. Um, but our problems are it's going to tilt forward. So we can easily adjust that. Let's pull that back a wee bit. And then it's actually tilting like mad, as you can see, uh, your way to the right. So we need to do something about that. Uh, what I'm going to do is put some weight on the outside edge here. And uh, for those who come from the UK and of a certain age, I'm actually going to use some sticky back plastic, as they call it, and I'm basically going to use some weight, so uh, some coins, basically, or you could use washers, or you can use whatever you like, really. This is just the way I'm going to do it. So basically, I need to just balance it up that way a wee bit, and this is a bit of a fiddle, but it will be a bit of a fiddle. And that's not far off. You can always just add another little bit. Uh, it just gives me a rough idea of how it's going to work. So, as you can see, that's just about balancing. Yep, so that's not bad. But I'm actually going to put the weight probably over here. And obviously, I don't want to introduce too much weight. I don't want to put a whole load of weight on top of this because uh, there's no need really. So, I'll try it first of all with it. This is a two pence coin uh, from the UK. So, uh, and there's a, you know, you have to use all your expertise and skill to do this, you just basically just do that with it, pop it like that, and then just literally just wrap it around. That's it. It is that difficult. So and then I'm just going to pop that on the end there. Sorry, this is going to wind up with loads of hands stuck all over the front of the video camera. Trying to do this, thing. oh, and there we go. The thing I dislike about the ME is you just turn it on as soon as you breathe on that front button. But there we go. There we go. So, well, that's not too bad. Oh, shush you. Yeah, so that's not bad. <laughs> that's actually better than I was thinking, as you know, you don't actually need the motors on, it's actually doing a three axis gimbal all by itself. So. That's brilliant. I, I think that's fine. Uh, do I need to tighten it up a bit more? Perhaps I do. A uh, couple of options. You could put another elastic band around it if you like, or you can just pull this one tighter. Uh, make sure it's not going to catch on here and, and interfere with any of the uh, motors or the bearings there. But um, that doesn't seem to be much of a problem, actually. It seems to be fine. So, and it's, again, it's just it's a very fine balance on this. But there we go, that's that's working fine. Okay, make sure when you're, if you're working with any of the action cams, quite often the lens goes out further than the actual lens mount there. So make sure you've got a nice soft cloth down uh, when you put it down. If not, you're just gonna scratch that lens and then uh, make it pretty useless. Uh, I've popped the uh, dampeners in and added a couple of, uh, elastic bands to the back there, uh, which is how I'm going to mount it. I'm going to mount it to the uh, CX-20 with the elastic bands. Make sure you go through the top plate if you're doing it this way. If you go through the bottom plate, you're just ignoring what the dampeners will do uh, and you'll probably get jello on your uh, or a, a wobble running through your video. Uh, the whole idea of this is to remove that, so that's good. Um, just going to pop another couple of elastic bands into the front area. So I can attach it to the front. And then we've still got this problem where the actual motor is sticking out much further than this top plate, which I would have thought they would have put bigger dampeners in, but they don't, so that's fine. Uh, I did look at actually drilling the hole into the CX-20, but I don't really want to be doing that. So uh, what I've done is made up a little foam block here. Um, it's just 
uh, just some foam I had kicking around. Uh, stuck three bits together for this. Uh, if you've got one bit, that's fine. I've used sponges. Um, anything is fine, really. Adds a little bit of softness to it as well. And then even when that's compressed, we still that's still going to clear that motor. You don't want to be touching that motor onto the body of the quad because that's going to send vibrations straight through and bypass all of this uh, anti-dampening here. So uh, anti-vibration, sorry, here. So, so we just put that on like that and then let's get it assembled. Okay, so got the CX20 here. I've added some insulation foam uh, that they use around pipes. Uh, again, just held on with elastic bands. And I've put an extra layer there just to clear so the camera won't actually bounce on the ground. And uh, we're all ready to pop it on. So just make sure you've, you're facing the correct way on the front of the gimbal, obviously. Make sure you've got your foam in there to protect it as well. Simply slide it back in. This is one of the reasons I want it like this with a very simple attachment is that I can just take it off and fly without it um, if I want to have a bit of fun or if I just want to put the uh, another gimbal on or anything else it's just that simple so it's uh, just literally out and round that's us all held on and as you can see the camera is sitting pretty pretty good and as you can see it won't fail yes if it goes that far over it will um, but to be honest to clear it totally you'd have to be up so high um, it only goes to there anyway uh, I don't think it's necessary I didn't have the uh, two axis gimbal this high off and then this we need to feed feed this up and down a leg and then just plug it in so that the gimbal gets a, a feed from the CX20 and uh, we'll pop that outside and uh, give it a fly and I'll put some footage on see what we think Let's so pull it slightly forward. I mean, that's a nice thing about the design. You can put it wherever you like. Well, <laughs> I use the term design very loosely, obviously. It's an elastic band, I know. <laughs> there we go. And try and get it so it's level and balanced to start off with. And then it doesn't have to do much work with the motors. And uh, a little thing I've found is the motors are making a noise, which they're not then it's actually struggling and that is not struggling at all as you can see nice and smooth if I fly like I would normally fly nice and smooth for video need to see whether or not we get any jello or any problems that seems pretty smooth way too aggressive what I normally do. 